For authors, filmmakers, entertainment, and all your listening needs, listen now to Talk Now Radio, where no topic is taboo. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk Now Radio. This is your host, Royce the Redneck Radio Man, and joining me tonight is going to be Thomas Fusco, and we'll be discussing his uh, book, uh, The Cosmic Veal, and you can learn more about him and his book at www.cosmicveal.com, and that's C-O-S-M-I-C-V-E-I-L dot com, and Tonight, where the specific topic is coming from his book, I actually titled it The Super uh, uh, Geometric Theory of Everything, Including Paranormal Phenomena, because that's basically what all's in the book. And we're going to go more in depth into that. He's told me on an email recently that he's uh, had some recent validation and some other new things going on, and that's going to be some of the first thing I'm going to ask him about that I've been dying to ask him about ever since I got his email. And before we go into that, I want to remind everybody that you can get your uh, Android app at my website. Uh, go underneath the chat room and uh, click the logo that says Get Our App. And this is for Android. I have not found anything for iPhone yet. I am still working on that. Also, for those of you that like to listen to my archives, I'm going to be honest with you, I had to block the archives off to registered listeners, or actually registered registered members to my site only, because a hacker recently got into my archives, opened up a back door to my hard drive, and crashed my computer, and I had to rebuild everything from scratch, and it took me a couple, three weeks or more to get all this back up and running, so I do apologize for the inconvenience. <clears throat> but with hackers around, what choice do I have? I'm still posting a half shows at YouTube and Daily Motion with a link back to my archive, which has the full description, uh, links to the book, the whole nine yards, and the complete show. So I, I encourage everybody to get a membership at my site. It doesn't cost you anything. It gets you into the archive. It gets you in the chat. Uh, it enables you to upload files uh, and do other things as well that requires a membership that's uh, secured from hackers. And God knows i got plenty of features here that you might be interested in. Now to move on with the show real quick, like, Thomas, how are you doing tonight? Oh, very good, Rory. Thanks for having me back on the show. Oh, i got to tell you, I really enjoyed the last time we was on the air. I thought we got rather in-depth with the subject, and I thought it was very, uh, very enlightening, to say the least. And I think there was a few people that agreed with me, because later on after the interview... I saw that it had been posted to other sites as well. Well, that's great. Uh, you know, uh, I'm always uh, very enthused and, and hopeful that, uh, you know, people are uh, listening and, and kind of thinking about some of the ideas that I have. And, uh, you know, it gives them new avenues to explore and kind of brings a, a fresh, uh, uh, you know, body of thought uh, to this field. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you, and I think it's a field like you was telling me earlier while we was waiting for the show to start that's very uh, important for everybody to learn. I mean, uh let's just say you're into religion, for example. I don't think you could ever fully understand God without understanding the quantum mechanics at the base of his reality, just to give an example. And, and I know not everybody believes in God, but I think you get the idea what I mean when I say that. Yes, and, you know, we have learned uh, through science, uh, particularly over the last 50 years, that the universe is an extremely ordered and structured uh, place. Uh, it conforms and is constrained quite strongly to a given set of laws and principles, even though we're still trying to understand and figure out all of those. And so, consequently... Uh, if there is a creator, uh, he or whatever is obviously a god or a creator of order. And so 
uh, however the universe was put together, uh, the, the order is intricate to that, and it's something that uh, we are able to at least recognize and decipher on some level. Yes, I would tend to agree with you on that. And, uh, no, not everybody, I think, has uh, covered it to the same degree or same level. Uh, and we know that some scientists in the quantum mechanics area has gotten down to the uh, nitty-gritty a lot more than, say, some of the other people have gotten down. And some people have dealt with it more on a theoretical basis. I know, uh, me, myself, I'm no scientist, and everything I do is speculation. But, you know, even a speculation, uh, where do you begin experiments at, if not with speculation? Well, you uh, uh, speculation can certainly play a role in it. Uh, we, we like to call that a hypothesis. Uh, in science. But um, as you know, Royce, my approach has been different. Uh, rather than to try to investigate paranormal phenomena as a independent or an individual, uh, uh, you know, uh, subject of study, it occurred to me early on in my work that we were dealing with a much larger issue we were actually dealing with the way that the universe is assembled, the laws and principles that govern this this particular physical aspect of reality. And so at that point in my work, paranormal phenomena became a body of evidence that was coupled with other bodies of evidence, the combination of which allowed me to come up with a different model of basically how the universe is put together, or what physicists would call a TOE, a theory of everything. So it's very comprehensive. It's much different than uh, than uh, pretty much everything else that uh, most people have heard about in this field. Well, I've heard of the theory of everything, and from what I've read about it on the Internet, it's sort of like the uh, scientist's holy grail. Absolutely. It is the ultimate goal of the physicists to come up with a, 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 a basic concept and a basic set of uh, mathematics that, uh, from which that concept, uh, all things in the universe can be ultimately projected and derived. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, there's been some very good work done in that area, but one of the things that my work focuses on is some of the, what I consider to be uh, erroneous assumptions mm. in science that have really limited uh, what we can do in that area. We kind of have to uh, take a, a new approach, a new paradigm to, to doing this. In other words, uh, determining, for example, that the law of fix, uh, physics are totally immutable you might be making them immutable yourself because you didn't try to go around them and find out if they really were. Uh, yes, that's one aspect. My big argument, um, my fundamental argument, is that uh, mainstream physics today works under a paradigm, under a philosophy, that reality is the physical universe, and the physical universe is reality. And the two are synonymous. There's nothing outside of that. I argue, and other physicists have argued this as well, that reality is more than what is physical. There is a non-physical, or what I call a super-physical, or super-geometric aspect to reality that we cannot directly observe uh, and measure. All we can do is observe and measure the results the effects of that non-physical aspect of reality. And so this, to me, is one of the limited, limiting paradigms of modern physics. It's one of the reasons, the main reasons, why we get some of these really bizarre theories, like string theory and M theory, because physicists are trying to shoehorn all physical observations into a completely physical paradigm where cause and effect occur on the same physical plane and nothing is outside of it. And that paradox, that, that anomalous 
uh, type of approach leads us to a lot of very, very strange theories and ideas that never quite uh, make it. They never quite add up to what, uh, what the theorist is trying to accomplish. Or what he's expecting. Um, now, one of the things I wanted to ask you real quick, like, <clears throat> was uh, the term supergeometric. Is that something that uh, is used mainly by you, and uh, how are you using it? Uh, it's a term that is used very limited uh, in uh, um, in science. I've kind of adopted it and given it a bit of a different uh, <clears throat> definition, uh, which I believe is, well, I should say probably a more comprehensive definition. Uh, what I'm talking about is, first of all, the physical universe, that part of reality, is basically laid out on a dimensional geometric grid. Um, this relates to Einstein's uh, spatial field and his concept of space-time, where the entire physical realm is laid out on a grid that is four-dimensional, uh, length, width, depth, and time. And so we can consider this as kind of an idea of geometry, uh, at least a spatial aspect of it. But in, in science, when we're studying uh, supersets and subsets of systems, uh, we might be, let's say, for example, we might be studying the life cycle of the, uh, uh, of the blue orchid or whatever. And that's actually a subsystem of the local environment in which it lives. So from the orchid's ecosystem's point of view, the uh, environment that it occupies is kind of a super system or a superset of the orchid's life cycle. So in this case, I wanted to talk about geometry because it's, it's a structure. It's something that people can wrap their heads around but to uh, indicate that there is something above geometry, that there's a superset to it. And so we're talking about information. We're talking about an order, a structure, a matrix, a blueprint, uh, however you might want to phrase it, that is not physical, that it exists above the physical, and it's not bound by geometric dimensions. And yet the geometry of dimensions actually emerges from it. It's it's kind of an old idea, Royce. It's been around for a long time. Yeah, it uh, sounds like biblical passages to me. Yeah. If, if, you, uh, if you switch the terminology, I mean. Absolutely. Uh, uh, the Bible actually discusses this kind of an idea, where in the Judaic texts in the Old Testament, uh, it was called the wisdom of God. And it was the wisdom of God that formed all things. Um, it's called the artificer of all things. And in the New Testament, it, it, it employs the uh, Greek philosophical term logos. When we read the Gospel of John, the first paragraph, uh, the English translation says, in the beginning was the word. But the underlying Greek is a word logos. Right which is a Greek philosophical term, which means mind, thought, order, structure, matrix, pattern. There really is no exact English equivalent to it. So this is the same kind of concept. Um, when we get into modern times, of course, we have several very prominent physicists suggesting the same kind of idea. Um, David Bohm uh, called it implicit order. And he said that implicate order was not physical, but the physical reality of explicate order uh, arose from it. Uh, David Finkelstein uh, called it co uh, coherent superpositions. John Wheeler called it pre-geometry. And so my particular particular term is supergeometry, and I think that it's uh, I'd be bold enough to say it's probably more effective than some of the other terms that have been used in the past. And what you was mentioning a minute ago about 
<clears throat> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Yeah. And you said it referred to the Logos. That's also was the reference to Christ. So another way of looking at it is Christ existing outside of, yet filling all things. Uh, if you want to look at it from a religious, a religious standpoint. Yes, in fact, you know, there is a, uh, a a branch, so to speak, or a portion of Christianity that some people call mystical Christianity. Um, I tend to kind of uh, shy away from that. I consider Christianity on the whole, the whole thing is mystical. But um, from that perspective, from getting into those deeper uh, mysterious thoughts, um, that Christ, the idea of Christ is that he is the Logos. He actually is that super geometric pattern that I'm talking about, uh, where it says that all things were made through him, and Paul echoes it in his writings later on. Um, and he says, in him all things hold together. Um, there's a, uh, a passage from a very early Christian text that quotes Jesus as saying, if you look under a rock, you will find me. If you crack open a piece of wood and look inside of its pattern, you will see me there. And so, yes, you're right. The idea of Christ and Logos is synonymous in the deeper Christian meaning. So this here uh, super geometric that you're referring to, then, it would, like I say, it would exist outside as we know it or could term it of uh, our reality while it at the same time or at least parts of it fills and sustains and everything emerges from it at the same time yes uh, it, 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 those who are familiar uh, with some parapsychological uh, 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 events uh, uh, might be familiar with Edgar Casey. he called it the Akasha but if I'm familiar take- with that Yes, it's the same idea. Now, the thing is, though, the problem has been, as in the past, these have always been, this idea has always been cast in a religious or a philosophical uh, framework. What I've done is actually taken it and incorporated it into a very uh, solid scientific conceptual model. Now, there's a new twist right there. Yes. Uh, give you an example. This is something that, uh, um, you know, that, that, that we don't talk about too much. Uh, people don't talk about too much. But from, a, uh, from the world of science, uh, if we take a look at the very beginnings of the universe, uh, what physicists call the Big Bang, and uh, unlike what some people might argue, the more evidence that we acquire over time, Royce, the – uh, the more it seems to validate that something like the Big Bang took place. This is a true creation out of nothing. The Big Bang is supposed to have begun with what we call a quantum singularity, which uh, is defined in science as being infinitely dense and infinitely small. Now, if we take a look at those terms for a minute, and try to talk about what these actually mean. Because it's very bizarre for, you know, the average person to, uh, you know, to consider these, to hear these ideas and say, well, what, what's that all about? What it means is this, is that we have a multiplicity or a duplicity in physical reality. In other words, everything in the physical is defined by some combination of four independent variables, length, width, depth, and time. Virtually every aspect of reality, of physical reality, uh, has to be uh, uh, defined and cast within that particular framework. So here we have a fourfold um, designation for every aspect of physical reality. What a singularity is, is that it has no variance, or that's what Einstein called them, variance. In other words, there is no length, width, depth, and time. There are no dimensions, because dimensions are an expression of differences. If we were going to 
put it in a very elementary way, uh, if we were going to teach it in first or second grade, uh, this is how we would do it. We would do it like real simple math where in, 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 in subtraction they would say the difference between 8 and 3 is 5. Um, dimensions are the expressions of differences. So when we're talking about the spatial ones, Royce, when we're talking about length, width, and depth, we're actually, I say, we're talking about differences between here and there. It's the simplest way to understand it. When we're talking about, my, about time, my definition of time is a measurement of the difference between then and now. And so when we look at that way, it's very elementary, and it's actually quite accurate. Um, when we're talking about a sing singularity, there is no then and now. There's no distinction between the two. There is no here and there. There's no distinction between those. There's no variance. Everything is a single mathematical coordinate. Now, that being said, that means that a singularity cannot be physical. It cannot exist on the physical plane because it doesn't have dimension. Now, when we talk about something that's infinitely dense and infinitely small, we're using this term infinite. And one of the fundamental principles of physics is that there are two values that nothing in the physical universe can ever have. And those two values are zero or infinity. Nothing in the physical universe can be a nothingness or infinite. And so when we're talking about something that's infinitely dense and infinitely small, we are definitely talking about something that lays outside the physical. Now suddenly, this singularity opens up. It begins to unfold. And out of it emerges the spatial and temporal dimensions that define the physical universe. And so we have a materialization here of something that was not material and then became material for some unknown reason. The other aspect of it that is rarely talked about, particularly in the paranormal field, is the concept of information. We talk about energy and waves and frequencies and light and this and that and completely ignore the idea that things like apparitions or, um, you know, uh, disembodied voices are a coherent collection of information. And so in the early universe, suddenly we had this information emerging from the invisible, from the non-physical, what I call the superphysical or super geometric. And this information begins to materialize. Everywhere in the universe, at the same time in the early universe, we began to have elementary particles to materialize and form. There was no trial and error process. There was not like uh, uh, pre-physical particles began to try to assemble themselves and fall apart until by some evolutionary process the first electron came into existence and then every other electron was the child of that one electron, the descendant of it. Electrons began to form everywhere in the universe at the exact same time according to some predetermined order that existed in this singularity. So this is the idea of supergeometry and the basic fundamental concept behind my particular model of, of reality. Well, it's interesting you brought up the part about information. That was one of the key things I was working toward getting to, and you brought it up without before I could get to it, so I, I kind of like that. Because um, you said in your email to me, recognition of my work has been growing. There has also been some notable developments, including experimental validation for certain aspects of my model of paranormal mechanics, as well as the emergence of an information paradigm. And that was going to be one of the first things I asked you, was wanting to ask you about is explaining this information paradigm because, uh, well, quite frankly, my understanding, and my understanding very well could be wrong, and I'd be happy for you to correct me on it, is that most 90% of everything that is created in this here 
reality has got information as its base material to start building on. You're absolutely right. But now this is a, a, a concept that in the field of science is a relatively recent one. Over the last 30, 40 years, this has really begun to develop. Um, and as so often in the field of science, we will use certain words that are also used in common language, but when they're used in the framework of science, they mean something a little bit different. And information is one of these. Um, back in school, we were all taught the conservation laws of mass energy that colloquially put uh, matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Um, today, we have an extension to those conservation laws that says the information from which matter and energy is assembled itself can neither be created nor destroyed. So information in the terms of a blueprint or a formula by which matter and energy is assembled is now a fundamental concept of physics. Uh, now, how do we relate this with paranormal phenomena? Um, one of the examples I like to use, Royce, is I say, okay, let's talk about a, uh, a hypothetical paranormal um, investigation. Um, you know, the current occupants of a house are having a problem. They say that they keep seeing this lady manifest, and she floats through the living room and comes visit to kids at night and all that kind of thing. So a paranormal team comes in, starts doing an investigation. One of them goes to a library, local library, and uh, finds a photograph, an old photograph of, of a woman who say, uh, say she lived in the house 100 years ago. And they copy the photograph, they bring it in, and they show it to the current residents of the house. And their jaws drop, their eyes bulge. They say, oh, my goodness, that's the woman we've been seeing. That's who we're seeing. Um, now, what does this mean in terms of information? And, again, this is the kind of what I'm about to talk about is the kind of thinking that is fundamental to paranormal effects but has been almost completely ignored in the field of paranormal research or hasn't really been recognized for what it is. Let's take a look at this scenario and, 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 and analyze it for a second in how physics would see it. Okay, we have a photograph of this woman of 100 years ago. What is that photograph exactly? It's a recording of information. And what the information is, is the outside geometry of the woman who sat for the photograph. All that geometric structure and the various colors of the flesh tones and the clothing, uh, the fabric, everything, is a collection of information. Now, how did it get on the film? It would, the information was carried on a light wave. The information was actually embedded in the light wave and was conveyed via the light wave through the lens of the camera and was recorded on the photographic plate. Now, this is a copy of that information, right? Yes, we, yes, exactly. It's like copying a disc or something. Uh, we've made a recording of that external information, of the geometry of that woman, and we've recorded it on a photographic plate. That's really what a photographic plate is, a record of information conveyed to it via light waves, just like a radio wave can carry a radio signal. And you can have a certain receiver that when you turn it on, you can hear the broadcast that's being carried by the radio wave. The photographic plate can, you know, record the broadcast of the woman's information of her external geometry that was broadcast to that plate via light waves. And see, even this basic fundamental concept, the vast majority of even quote-unquote scientific paranormal researchers aren't even looking at it on that level. And it needs to be looked at on this level. That so, makes sense. Yeah, because that's what it actually is. 
And when you start seeing things that way, it begins to lift quite strongly to a given set of laws and principles, even though we're still trying to understand and figure out all of those. And so consequently, uh, if there is a creator, uh, he or whatever is obviously a god or a creator of order. And so uh, however the universe was put together, uh, the, the order is intricate to that, and it's something that uh, we are able to at least recognize and decipher on some level. Yes, I would tend to agree with you on that. And, uh, no, not everybody, I think, has uh, covered it to the same degree or same level. Uh, and we know that some scientists in the quantum mechanics area has gotten down to the uh, nitty-gritty a lot more than, say, some of the other people have gotten down. And some people have dealt with it more on a theoretical basis. I know, uh, me, myself, I'm no scientist, and everything I do is speculation. But, you know, even a speculation, posting uh, half shows at YouTube and Daily Motion with a link back to my archive, which has the full description, uh, links to the book, the whole nine yards, and the complete show. So I encourage everybody to get a membership at my site. It doesn't cost you anything. It gets you into the archive. It gets you in the chat. Uh, it enables you to upload files uh, and do other things as well that requires a membership that's uh, secured from hackers. And God knows i got plenty of features here that you might be interested in. Now to move on with the show real quick, like, Thomas, how are you doing tonight? Oh, very good, Rory. Thanks for having me back on the show. Oh, i got to tell you, I really enjoyed the last time we was on the air. I thought we got rather in-depth with the subject, and I thought it was very uh, very enlightening, to say the least. And I think there was a few people that agreed with me, because later on after the interview, I saw that it had been posted to other sites as well. Well, that's great. Uh, you know, I'm always uh, very enthused and and. <clears throat> For authors, filmmakers, entertainment, and all your listening needs, listen now to Talk Now Radio, where no topic is taboo. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk Now Radio. This is your host, Royce the Redneck Radio Man, and joining me tonight is going to be Thomas Fusco, and we'll be discussing his uh, book, uh, the Cosmic Veal, and you can learn more about him and his book at www.cosmicveal.com, and that's C-O-S-M-I-C-V-E-I-L.com. And tonight, where the specific topic is coming from his book, I actually titled it The Super uh, Ge uh, Geometric Theory of Everything, Including Paranormal Phenomena, because that's basically what all's in the book. And Hopeful that, uh, you know, people are uh, listening and, and kind of thinking about some of the ideas that I have. And, uh, you know, it gives them new avenues to explore and kind of brings a, a fresh, uh, uh, you know, body of thought uh, to this field. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you, and I think it's a field like you was telling me earlier while we was waiting for the show to start that's very uh, important for everybody to learn. I mean, uh, let's just say you're into religion, for example. I don't think you could ever fully understand God without understanding the quantum mechanics at the base of his reality, just to give an example. And, and I know not everybody believes in God, but I think you get the idea what I mean when I say that. Yes, and, you know, we have learned uh, through science, uh, particularly over the last 50 years, that the universe is an, ex is an extremely ordered and structured uh, place. Uh, it conforms and is constrained. And we're going to go more in-depth into that. He's told me on an email recently that he's uh, 
had some recent validation and some other new things going on, and that's going to be some of the first thing I'm going to ask him about that I've been dying to ask him about ever since I got his email. And before we go into that, I want to remind everybody that you can get your uh, Android app at my website. Uh, go underneath the chat room and uh, click the logo that says Get Our App. And this is for Android. I have not found anything for iPhone yet. I am still working on that. Also, for those of you that like to listen to my archives, I'm going to be honest with you. I had to block the archives off to registered listeners or actually registered, registered members to my site only because a hacker recently got into my archives, opened up a back door to my hard drive and crashed my computer. And I had to rebuild everything from scratch. And it took me a couple, three weeks or more to get all this back up and running. So I do apologize for the inconvenience. <clears throat> but with hackers around, what choice do I have? I'm 